Hi, this is Mr. Spradlin, and today we're going to be looking at a few different kinds of motion we can do in Scratch. First of all, I want to make the cat follow the mouse cursor around so we can use him as a game character. Let's start off by going to the control section and getting a when the green flag is clicked block. This will be our starter block here. And what we want to do with this is we want to have the cat chase the mouse cursor around and always stick right on top of it. So to do that, I'm going to use this block right here, the go to something block. Now this go to block right now only has one option, which is the mouse pointer. And uh, that's just what I want. So I'll choose the mouse pointer and let's try it out. I'll press the green flag and sure enough, he jumps right to the mouse pointer, but he doesn't stay there he's not sticking to it. When I, I do this, watch carefully at this block of code here. You'll see a little white flicker for just one brief second. See that? It flickers white around the edge just for a brief moment uh, as the cat moves. The white border shows that this code is active. It's only active for a brief moment. What's happening is the green flag is being clicked, it goes to the mouse pointer, and then that's the end of the instructions. There's nothing else after that. We have to make this happen over and over again. So I'm going to take this forever block here from the control section. And I'll drag this out. And I'll put the go to mouse pointer inside it. Now this makes a, a slight change in the program. At this point, it's going to say when the green flag is clicked, forever do all this stuff forever and ever and ever or at least until the stop sign is pressed. So it's going to go forever, go to mouse pointer and watch the difference now. I hit the green flag and the cat sticks to the mouse. Wherever I move my mouse the cat follows. So now this cat can be my game character. A game wouldn't be a good game without some kind of obstacle or objective so I'm going to add another character that will chase the cat. This will be our enemy. First I'll hit the stop sign, make the cat uh, let go of my mouse, and I want to make a new sprite. I don't want to paint it because I'm not a very good artist, so I'll choose a new one from a file. Scratch has a lot of built-in sprites. You can import your own too, but the built-in ones are pretty extensive. And let's see if we can find something that would be a good enemy for the, the cat. Just open the animals folder there, and let's see if we can find a good enemy for our cat. There's other cats there. There's a crab. Let's see, there's a dinosaur. A little dog. Hmm. There's fish. Might be kind of a weird one. And let's see, what would be good? You know, I saw towards the beginning there was a bee. And I think the bee might be a good character to use for this. I'll take this B here, and we'll make the B chase the cat around. Now this B, compared to the cat, is pretty big. I don't think I want a giant monster B chasing my cat around, so I'm going to shrink this B down a bit. Up here on top we have a few buttons. There's a uh, duplicate, delete, grow sprite, and shrink sprite. I'm going to click on the shrink sprite button, and I'll click this B several times to make them smaller. I want the bee to be a reasonable size. If he dominates the entire screen, he'll be hard to avoid. So I give it several clicks, probably a good 20 clicks or so, to get it about this size. To get rid of my shrink sprite, I just click outside on this gray tab. And now I have a small bee ready to chase my cat. Now this is the first time that we've had two different sprites in our, our game. And you'll see that if I click on sprite 1 in the sprite list, I have sprite 1's code. If I click on sprite 2, I have sprite 2's code, which I haven't put any in yet. But as we add more and more sprites, it becomes more important to have good names for our characters. So I'm going to take sprite 1 before we go any further, and I'm going to call him Cat. I'll go to Sprite 2, and I'll call him B. 
Now I have cat and b. These make a lot more sense than sprite 1 and sprite 2. So for the b, we want the b to chase the cat. So we'll get a green flag click block. We'll go to motion. And let's see, what can we use here? Well, I think the easiest way to do this would be to always point towards the cat. And sure enough, cat is one of our options there. And then to move a certain amount of distance, move 10 steps. 10 might be a bit much. Let's try move maybe three steps. And we'll see how that looks. Let's go to control and we'll get that same forever block and put this code inside it and that should be our B. Hit the green flag and sure enough the B is relentlessly chasing us wherever we go. Now all we've done so far is add the code to make the B chase the cat. If the B catches the cat, he doesn't know what to do. You see how he's jumping around like crazy there? What he's doing is he's trying to go towards the cat still, but it keeps passing it by you know two or three steps and having to go back again. So he's just jumping around like crazy and just going nuts there. And this is fine for now. We're going to add later on a way to detect when, the, when he's hit us. But just bear in mind that anything that you want the character to do, you have to tell it how to do it in code. The bee doesn't know what to do once he gets to the cat. We have to tell it what to do. But now we have the beginnings of a game. The cat has to stay away from the bee. So we could do this maybe with a timer. If you stay away from the bee for a certain amount of time, then you win the game, or you get points for the longer you avoid the bee. Maybe, maybe the bee becomes faster over time, or we add more bees, or the bee gets larger. Or we could add another objective, something that, that the cat is wanting to obtain. Let's hit the stop sign there and take a look at that.